star. I was trying to get the sparrows and then the grackles showed up and they flew away. <clears throat> Man, there must have been like 30 of them out there. They're so little. Cute little things. Hey, little ones. They're eating millet and sweet. Can't even see them because of the screen. I don't want to sprinkle it on the porch because they'll poop all over the porch and I'll have to go scrub it off. And I'm not ready to do that just yet. It's still early in the day. It's about 9.30. I haven't even put anything out. I guess that's left over from yesterday. Or maybe they're just bug hunting. Got this little... Oh, uh, the grackle scared them away. They're hard to see. The sparrows are, they're hard to see. There's one on the line looking at the door. It's like he's waiting for me to come out. He's so little. And he flew on the ground. <clears throat> I'm going to get a better camera kit so I can uh, do justice. Because this, this is not uh, justice doing it this way. You really can't see the detail and the beauty of these birds. The young grackles have learned to feed themselves. Little bolt tail. Little bolt tail. Hi, little bolt tail. They might be gray tails. I had, they hadn't fanned out yet, so I can't really see for sure, but they might, they're either females, female boat tail, or they might be female, um, great tail. Yeah, these are females. That one looks like a great tail. These little young ones here in the shadow. Yeah, great tail. That's a great tail right there. A young great tail. His dark feathers are coming in. And there's a adult male gray tail. Grackle. Yeah, get all those bugs. If you see some flies, get those too. Get all the flies. Get those mosquitoes. Here's a little sparrow. Hey, little sparrow. Hey, little chick. Hi, little chick chick. You're so cute. And they're gone. So the grackles are coming over here.
They go from yard to yard. I guess it depends on who throws out what. Some people just throw out nothing but bread. And they will uh, throw out whole slices, I notice. You know, and I'm like, that big piece like that, they're going to fight over that. And, you know, when I do bread, I pinch it in a little small pieces so that the smaller chicks can handle it. They can get to it. Otherwise, the big birds will bully them for the big pieces. Squirrels don't particularly like bread. They will eat it. They will eat a cracker. I usually give them nut crackers, though. When I do give them crackers, it's, it's the grain, the multi-grain nut crackers, the little hard, crispy ones. They like those, but they don't particularly care for uh, uh, bread. They will eat it if there's nothing else, but that's not their choice of food. They really prefer nuts and stuff that has nuts in it. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Female grackles. Um, these guys are great tails. The black with the bluish tinge on it. But like I said, this this camera doesn't really do it justice filming from this spot. You know, I, I really need to get a better kit and uh, where I can get some close-ups and get me some lenses and stuff. And then I can probably sit on a chair out there in the shade and catch them up close with it, you know, sit somewhere where they can't see me. About 9.45 a.m. You know, some people might think, especially men, brothers, and particularly the uh, overly religious type, you know, they might say, well, you know, how come you're not doing... Um, homemaker stuff, you know, girly stuff. I mean, you know, like, my house is clean. There's nobody to cook for but me. And um, unless I have my son over for dinner and he has his own apartment, you know, he comes over every blue moon. And um, I don't have children. I'll be 60 years old next year. So, you know, this is what I do with my personal time and my spare time. And so there are some who might think, well, how come you're not teaching the young women how to be a good homemaker and, and, and how to raise children and all that? You know, because I'm not their mother. That's why. Uh, young women, if they inquire uh, something from me, then I'll assist them when they inquire or when they request assistance. If they don't request it, hey, hey, little one, I don't pry into their personal lives or their personal business because it's not my business. It's not my business to raise other women. Uh, does that make sense to you?
See, that's what busybodies do. You know, they get in other women's business. They get in other women's uh, personal affairs. And and they impose. They impose. When you impose, then it's, that's what we call being a busybody. You know? So I don't impose um, my personal views and personal opinions on other women and how other women should run their households, how they should run their lives. If they inquire for me, that's a totally different thing. If they ask for my assistance, that's a totally different thing. But if they don't ask, I don't pry. And that's just how it is. And that's how you stay out of trouble. You know, I could be sitting around watching soap operas. I choose not to. I could be sitting around binge watching Netflix or Hulu or something like that. But I'd rather do this. This is much more entertaining and it's much more educational. And I can share this information with other people. And if they choose to watch my channel, fine. If they don't, then they'll go to another channel. But it's not prying. It's not imposing my views. And I'm not being a busybody. You know, young women have to learn from experience on how to be a good homemaker, how to be a good wife. That's not anything you can actually teach a woman. She has to grow into that. And everybody's situation is different. Their marriage is different. Their household is different. Their family structure is different. So my, my household structure is totally different from a lot of the other sisters out there. You know, there are some, they may have a household of, of 10 people or more. Then there are some that are just um, newlyweds. There are others who are just brand new baby boomers, you know. Um, they may only have one or two children, toddlers to, to deal with. So everybody's family structure is different. Their circumstances are different. Their spiritual maturity level is different. And you really can't impose your personal view, your personal ideas on how somebody should run their house. So that's that's one of the reasons why um, I get along fairly well with my neighbors. I don't impose on my neighbors. I don't go to their houses and tell them how to raise their children, um, how to clean your house, and uh, how you should cook and slave over a stove. I cook all the time. I love cooking. I love cooking. You know, when I was young, I kept house all the time. That's all I really wanted to do was uh, be a housewife and be a minister's wife. That's what I wanted, but that's not what the most high wanted for me. Does that make sense to you? I wanted to be a missionary when I was young. But that's not what the Most High wanted for me. If he wanted me there, then I would be doing that. If he wanted me to be a minister's wife, I'd still be married. But that's not what he wanted for me. You know, some people are good at being eunuchs. Uh, being single and being satisfied. Sometimes that's best for some people. I try being married. I was married twice, and I was a very good housewife because that's how my mother raised me. You know, that's, she, she prepped me for that, to be a homemaker. And I was a very good homemaker. But some advice on this, when you leave your parents' house, stay gone. Don't keep going back home. You know, my parents got involved in my personal life when I really wanted to make my own decisions. My parents were very demanding. They were very strict. And um, one of the things that I had problems with that my husbands did not like was that my parents would always call me every day. 
every day my mother would call me. Well, Chris, can you come over and do this and can you come over and do that? And you know what? I had to have a talk with my parents. I'm like, I'm married now. I got my own house. I I have laundry to do. I have I have a child. Well, I'll help you with that. But can you come over and do this? And can you come over and do that? And my mother had me coming by almost every day, literally almost every day, doing errands and doing stuff for her. And my husband got tired of that. You know, he was patient for a while, you know, but my husband got tired of that. Men do get tired of sisters who keep going over to their mother's house. You're you're at your mother's house more than you're at your own house. That's what happened to my first marriage. Same thing with the second marriage. My husband didn't want to leave his mother's house. Always at his mother's house. So those marriages didn't work out for that reason. It's like, it's a different thing if it's an emergency. Even when my mother had a stroke and was in the hospital, my father insisted that I come back home, move back in with them, and help take care of my mother. Even though my baby sister was there. They wanted me to do it. They wanted me to do it. They didn't they they really didn't care that I had my own marriage and on top of all that I was living out of state. I was living out of state. Sometimes you have to move out of state to get away from family so you can concentrate on your own house and your own marriage and your own priorities. And stop letting other people meddle in your business and stop telling people your business. And don't try to pry into theirs. If they don't ask you for your help, you're not obligated to give it. Simple as that. If they don't ask you for advice, you are not obligated to give it. Even when it comes down to the scripture. Even when it comes down to biblical stuff. Because biblical people, Bible thumpers, are the most nosiest people that meddle in other people's business. They always got something to say. But let me tell you something. When it comes down to paying those loans, that's on you. When it comes down to paying that rent, that's on you. When it comes down to paying that car note, that's on you. So you got to get out there and do what you got to do to pay your own bills. It has nothing to do with scripture. Money is money. A bills, bills are bills. Priorities are priorities. So this is what I like to do. This is what comforts me. This is what calms me down. And I love nature. If we learn to take care of nature, nature will take care of us. And stay out of other people's business. Shalom.